Now joining the One Star Recruits podcast, we have a former NFL coach of the year, the current co-defensive coordinator of the Arizona State Sun Devils, and the pride of McDonald, Pennsylvania, and Fort Cherry High School, Marvin Lewis. How are you today, right. Coach? I'm doing good. Uh, it's excellent. It's good to be here with you guys. Good. You know, I want to How's take it back. Better? I want to take it back a little ways because you grew up near Pittsburgh playing football and, you know, out of high school, I know you were going to walk on at Purdue, but Idaho State came in and offered you a scholarship to play all the way across the country in the Big Sky Conference. Now, our show is called the One Star Recruits because, you know, look at us, but <laughs> it, it doesn't sound like you were too far off from that as a player. Am I right? Are you one of us, coach? Yeah, I'd be one of you. I'd be one of those nuts and bolts that makes everything go round. There it is. Perfect. Well, Coach, let me ask you this on the, along the same lines. Uh, uh, Rip here has a birthday coming up. He's a Libra. I actually am a Virgo. I have a birthday coming up. I know you're a September 23rd Libra. Uh, first of all, are you a birthday guy? And what does Marvin Lewis do for his birthday? Do you have anything special? I know you're a big football guy, so it's probably football something. Uh, I'm not a birthday person because my birthday's always been during football season. And right. so it's really been just like another day. Uh, now, Unfortunately, a lot of people around me always want to celebrate my birthday <laughs> more than I want to. Uh, so sometimes I have to be, uh, what's the word, very receptive and tolerable yeah. and, and thankful. It's like I put on the mask. You're like, oh, yay, you know, thank yeah, you. So, uh, but yeah, I've never really been a birthday person. So, but yeah, that, it is, you unfortunately, do. they come around every year. Right, right. Another year. Do you do any uh, special meals or anything? Any, any small little Coach Lewis things that you just do for yourself when that time comes around? I, I'm, I'm trying to get a ping pong tournament going this year. That's how one star I am. That's my goal. Well, for my no, I, I, think, I think we would have uh, uh, pineapple upside down cake would Ooh. be the deal. Ooh. Uh, so at the, uh, <clears throat> at the dinner meal, whether it was at the stadium for the coach's meal that yep. night, we would have a little special dessert pineapple upside down cake or at home or whatever even when I was growing up that was what my mom would make so I love uh, that's, that's probably my the most too. special thing yeah I'm, I'm gonna thank you for that I'm gonna remind my wife to add that to the dessert repertoire I, <laughs> I forgot about pineapple, pineapple upside down cake thank you coach let yeah. me ask you let me take it back to football um you know you kind of became a household name for us we grew up on the on the west coast here uh really for us in 2000s when you built that amazing uh defense in Baltimore uh, you know, let me ask you this. If you were building a defense now in life, uh, I know you work with a lot of college kids now. If you were building a defense now in life, uh, what play calls would you draw for people just kind of playing defense now during the pandemic, waiting to play offense? You know, a lot of us want to play offense, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, what are some opportunities that you would drop for one stars as play calls right now um, just in life? Well, I, I think the biggest thing right now is, you know, we all uh, got in touch uh, more with family and so forth. And, and I yeah. think we found different ways uh, to keep ourselves busy, to keep ourselves fit uh, because gyms were closed and everything. Uh, you saw a lot more walkers and so forth and uh, bikers and everything. And I just think that's, we really, uh, we went without sports on TV. Yeah. So we found a, a lot of family, uh, somewhat family oriented shows and sitcoms and everything. Uh, so really, you look at what we went, through, we've gone through since the mid-March. Uh, it's really been a, a big change in society uh, that way, and then we've gone from that to uh, the, our, our, the social injustice and so forth that's come along with it. So there's been a lot of uh, soul searching, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of rekindling relationships for some people, and and so forth. Yeah, thank you. And and in my household too, it's really it's opened a lot of doors and ways of thinking, just in terms of maybe new careers for people or passions that people weren't able to itch before that now they've had some time to, to scratch those passions that lead to new beginnings. So that's great advice, coach. Thank you. Coach, we love that, but we've got you on. We got to get to some football. I turned on the TV last night or the other night. I saw Frank Gore's kid playing. So I was like, okay, we're back, baby. Here. Uh, which is amazing as a Niner fan, but the Pac-12 isn't playing, and we're Pac-12 guys. So what, what are you doing? How are you keeping these kids focused? Uh, or at least kind of eye on the ball, because I think in January we're looking to play some football. Well, what we've uh, – coaches kind of – Herm's kind of come up with is we kind of have a four-week rotating schedule uh, where for the last two weeks 
Uh, we've spent a, a day in the meeting room, in the classroom, and a day kind of in the walkthrough mode uh, with the players. And then they've had strength and conditioning. And then the other rotation is just strength and conditioning. And then another rotation where it's just with the coaches. That's so great. so that everybody gets kind of a little bit of break. It's four days a week for the players. Um, you know, we're still in our morning uh, schedule routine like we would be in the fall here when we practice in the morning uh, that way. So uh, we're trying not to wear out the players, but really have had fun, uh, particularly just teaching guys the essence of football. Yeah, It's amazing. There's really not enough time in college football to teach them what they don't know. So we've been able to try and slow it down and, and, and teach them real fundamentals, basics of football, understanding leverage and inside and outside and what man-to-man -man means and what zone means and things like that that sometimes you don't have enough time to go back and, and make sure everybody understands uh, really at the, at the foundation uh, of what it, the meaning of it is. So, so it's been good. It's been fun. Um, you know, we are, like you said, we're trying to keep them focused so that they uh, uh, have the opportunity that when we get a chance uh, to start up, they're, they're in good position. Nice. Oh, I love that. That, that. That's awesome because I got to say, as an ASU guy, it's crazy. It is amazing for our fans that we have NFL legendary coaches on our staff. It, it's amazing. It feels, it feels surreal love it. as an ASU fan. And so does it feel, I mean, you're in it, and I know you're one of the legendary coaches, but you got Raiders, you got, Herm has just developed a, a beautiful culture and a beautiful staff. Do you see the kids looking at you guys different? Like, this isn't supposed to happen. I'm not supposed to have Coach Lewis here as my defensive coordinator, but he's potentially the greatest defensive coordinator of all time, right? So, so cool. do you see the kids look at you guys different or treat you different because you've got that NFL background? Well, I do think you do get to a degree of reverence. I, I, I think there's no question about that. But I think the biggest, the, the, the part of it is, is, you know, every kid, the difference, when I was in college football 28 years ago, the NFL, and I was at University of Pittsburgh, my last place I coached in college, we had a lot of NFL players, had a lot of first round draft picks, mm -hmm. but the NFL mm -hmm. was the unspoken word. Now it's expected in three years. That's what's expected by these kids. And I think that's the difference is we're able to really, uh, uh, reinforce to them what it takes to make it and stay and play on that level. Um, not just get there, but be able to stay there because what they don't understand is you're competing for the job, not just for the season, but, but basically week to week and, and, and the understanding, the finality. So last season when different guys would get released, uh, particularly big name, be like, coach, they just cut. So yeah, it's what they do, man. They cut you. <laughs> And you, you're not promised that you're there if you don't perform. And if you can't uh, stay in tow, if you don't know how to do the small things, and, and like if I tell you to wear ASU issue, okay, I don't want to see you in a white T-shirt. You know, yeah. that's the easiest part of your day is how you got dressed to come over here. You know, that ASU issue is very clean, by the way, too. You guys got some of the cleanest fits out there. Yeah. So, so and, and they got a ton of stuff. Yeah. So there's no problem for them to wear ASU issue. I, I said, so what if, you know, everybody else, you're right, Johnny, everybody else here is wrong. Okay. <laughs> so we would all have, we could have green, we could have purple, we could have a lot of orange, we could have a lot of different colors around here if we didn't do it that way. And, and that's the easiest thing you had to do today. It's not cover the go route. It's not play the double team. You know, it's not spill the ball to the perimeter. It's that's the easy thing that we're teaching you to do is to be disciplined on what to do, be on time and be where you're supposed to be. And so that's the thing that, you know, like we tell these guys, you know, pretty soon what happens in the NFL is that position coach, he's your champion. And then when you don't do what he tells you to do time and time again, he gets tired of it. The coordinator is already tired of it. He's ready to run your butt out of there anyway. But the position coach keeps champion. And then sooner or later, they get you out of there. They're tired of wasting their time on you, and, and you can't get the little things right. So we're really trying to impart that because that's really the success of what we'll have here yes. is to be able to do the little things right. You know, that goes back to Coach John Wooden's philosophy back, back in the 60s, the early 70s, you know. Absolutely. What's that philosophy? Remind us.
That's a life nice. thing. That's a, that, that translates to life. And that's what's so great about you guys and what, how you're teaching these kids is because whether they go on to the NFL or whatever walk of life, you're preparing them as best as yeah. possible to, for anything they encounter. How to take notes, how to study, how to eat correctly, how to go to sleep at night, turn off your device, okay? Turn it off, put it down. You don't need to have it in your hand 24 seven. And it doesn't matter what someone else, the only that matters is what the people in this building here say about you. What people outside say about you, that doesn't matter. That's not doing anything for you, but 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 making you one way or another. And you know what? And, when they, and in a week from now, they can say the opposite and again, it still shouldn't matter to you. Hey, Coach, how, speaking of uh, devices, I, I see uh, you joined Twitter a few months ago. How, how's this adjustment been for you? I'm sure you're hearing all kinds of interesting music in the locker room. Are you are you coming back to college? Are you feeling young and hip again? What's going on over there? Well, well here, here, here's that here's that phone. There it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. A nice one. Okay. So so that's the the ASU phone, and uh, you know. They send me what to retweet, okay? Gotcha. Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise, I, I'm no, I'm not like the rest of these guys, coaches in here that are constantly this and that, and they're like, hey, hey, coach, retweet this and follow that guy, and then so they can do it for me. So, uh, coach, we might yeah, have to send it, you. It, uh, we we might have to send you the process. podcast for a uh, for 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 a retweet if you don't mind. Maybe yeah. we get part of that, that game for. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 part of the process though. But I keep reminding these guys, I tell them all the time, I said, hey, AP, I don't want the guy we got to talk to every day. I said, that guy's high maintenance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if, if that's the reason the guy's choosing to come to Arizona State, is that really the guy you want? Yeah, right. And, you know, that, that you got to, you know, stroke him each and every that, That's not it, because that's not happening. It ain't happening when he leaves here for sure. You know what I'm saying? When he goes to play for pay, that, that doesn't happen that way. No, and uh, you know you got to have some passion about what you want to do, and have passion about where you are, and you got to be there for a reason. Coach, speaking of passion, you got leadership and passion there in your in your your staff, and we're big Herm fans. Uh, a couple years ago, I was lucky enough to play golf in one of Herm's uh, foundational events in Monterey, and he's passionate on the golf course. Who's the better golfer, you or Herm? Uh, you know, I think. I think he kind of always starts out uh, <laughs> a little better than me, and then I can finish a little stronger. Okay. Because he gets prepared. Oh. We were playing the in the uh, American Century Tournament together in Tahoe, and oh, uh, and he he comes. I mean, I'm watching him hit balls on the range. I'm like, man, you've been practicing, man. <laughs> <laughs> you looking good. And then, and then we always would play the first round together. And then I would see him, and then my wife would always follow him. You know. And uh, they would always, you know, follow. They they, they quit me. They go follow Herm because he's more entertaining. What's, what's you know? your handicap? What, uh, what's your handicap? Are you pretty good golfer? Uh, I'm getting better. My index now, I think, is a ten now, ten two or something. So oh, it's come down. Solid. Yeah, very solid. Yeah, solid. I still haven't gotten solid. into that single day. I had my best my best round ever last a week ago Saturday. I shot seventy seven with six birdies, so I felt pretty good. Oh. And I had a triple, so it was Whoa. good. What course? Give a, you want to give an Arizona course a shout out? We love Arizona yeah. love. Well, I where the, my my home course where I live, Desert Highlands. Oh, oh yeah, beautiful. Great. There you go, Coach. You know we end every interview with a rapid fire segment where I give you some quick hitters and you just let me know what comes to your mind when you hear these questions. And and I have a good one for you because you've lived that coach's life. You know, eight eight stops in forty years. And uh, for us, we love food. So I'm going to give you some cities you've stopped in. And I just want to hear a couple words about the dining scene. You know, maybe a favorite <laughs> restaurant or particular food you remember from each place. Does that work? Yep. Okay. All right, let's go all the way back to Idaho. I know you were in Pocatello for about eight years. Everyone always hears about the famous potatoes. What was your top food spot up there in your early 20s? Well, the top food stop, stop was uh, called the Sandpiper because I can never afford to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had so one of those always, too in Flagstaff. You know what I mean? So now yeah, it's always yeah. funny now when you go back, you're like, we couldn't afford to go in here. <laughs> <laughs> now you walk in with your head up, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. So All right, yeah. now uh, Pittsburgh, I know this is a softball for you because you were born and raised there and you also coached at Pitt and with the Steelers, but what do I need to try next time I'm in the Steel City? Oh, you got to have Permani Brothers. 
Oh yeah, the famous yeah. the famous uh, sandwich with the French fries on it and and oh, everything. And yeah, you got to have the Manny Brothers. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's uh, funny because uh, I when I coached at Pitt, I I worked with guys who grew up in Pittsburgh as well. So I learned so much more about Pittsburgh that the first thirty years of my life I had no idea of. <laughs> so it was awesome. Well, you know the good stuff now. What? Uh, okay, Baltimore. I know known for the crab cakes for sure. Whether whether it's those or something else, what's a hidden gem over there in Baltimore? Little Italy. Ooh. You got to go down uh, off the waterfront to Little Italy, and just fabulous little, um, like like little small houses almost restaurants. that just no fabulous way. food. Sounds um, European. Yeah, it, it is. It's just amazing. And then we we live by a family. Um, that uh, the Libratories, who had a number mm -hmm. of different restaurants and stores. And so they actually ended up being our neighbor the first year, uh, one of their, their brothers, their four brothers, and they catered our food at the, uh, for the Ravens, the really for the first inaugural wow. season of the Ravens. They were the wow. official caterer of the Baltimore Ravens. Yes. The wow. best raviolis, right? Great raviolis? Uh, raviolis, uh, you know, one of my favorites is chicken marsala. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Let's, uh, we can't leave out Cincinnati. We're there for 16 years. Do you ever crave that Cincinnati chili? No, I never got to be a big Cincinnati chili fan other than on the Coney dogs, uh, with yeah. that, but you got great steakhouses, great restaurants, uh, in, in Cincinnati, you know, uh, uh, you have, uh, Oh my gosh! Now you, you, it's funny you you ask, and, uh, <laughs> but, but we would spend a lot of time, uh, you know, at Eddie Merlot's. But uh, you also have Jeff Ruby's restaurant, steakhouses, and so forth. Montgomery Inn ribs. Uh, that's uh, one of the ones that I think that people, when they come to visit Cincinnati, they go to Montgomery Inn and have ribs. Okay, that's great. We're gonna put all these in the show notes, Coach Coach Lewis, so so our listeners can check them out when they're in these cities. And For last sure. one, uh, last one, Tempe. I mean, DK and I both grew up there, so that one's close to our hearts. You know, he spent almost every weekend at Ted's Hot Dogs over on Broadway and Yeah, Lentop. I love it. What, what's been your go-to spot so far? Wow, I've never been there, but but Coach Herm, last year, we would go get Lucille's, these ribs from Lucille's beef ribs. Ooh, okay. And uh, that's over here in Tempe also. And uh, that would be one of the ones that uh, – uh, last year when, when, of course, when his wife had gone back to Monterey, then he would eat like that. <laughs> right, right. Shout out to Lucille's. There you go. One of Tempe's <laughs> finest. Uh, Co Co Coach, let me ask you uh, to wrap this up here. We had uh, TJ Huchmanzada actually did our cameo where the guys can read our, your fantasy football teams. Yeah. And he was hilarious. Like, he was completely hilarious. I didn't really have any idea. Any memories or anything come to mind about TJ and Chad? Um, just at the top of your head about, you know, their comedy and just, they're, they're pretty funny guys. Well, when I first took the job, uh, there was that, this dude that wore 85 and a guy with a ponytail. And that's how <laughs> I knew him, okay, <laughs> back in 03. So I took him, uh, we took him to a school uh, where we were kind of promoting the tutor tutorial stuff uh, from the NFL. I can't remember what they exactly called the program now but they would put uh, tutors in the school to help kids raise their SAT scores and ACT scores. And so we went there to talk at the school. And so I asked them, I said, hey, have you guys, tell me your story. And when they both told me their story, I was like, oh my gosh, y'all are lucky to be alive, let alone, <laughs> you know, be in the NFL. And, uh, and so then I said, hey, have you done this much? And they go, no, coach, we don't do it. And I go, why? He goes, well, because the kids make fun of us. What do you mean they make fun of you? Well, we didn't win, so they, they tease because we didn't win. I said, we can uh, solve that. Just win. You know, yeah. that's easy. Just win. And uh, so the, to really watch the growth of both of them uh, as both players, but also as men and as fathers, uh, it, it's been outstanding uh, to watch them. And uh, TJ broke his wrist or kind of a sprained wrist pretty bad, severe his hand or something, the first camp. And so, so I, the, they actually wanted to cut him and I actually saved him. And, uh, and obviously it worked out great. Um, worked out he, right for you. Yeah. And yeah. for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Very well for him. Oh, yeah. Matt. Well, coach, hey, we'll let you get back to work. Anything for anything you, you know, have you spoken to Joe Burrows? Are you, are you involved at all with that or, or, or no? And if you could, do you have any advice for him? 
No, I haven't spoken to Joe, but the only thing I would say is, uh, you know, he's gone to a city that, uh, uh, you know, is really passionate about their football. Great football. And uh, he seems to have great leadership skills and, uh, you know, the opportunity to make a, a big impact. Um, uh, you know, the hard thing with playing a rookie quarterback is being able to protect a rookie quarterback. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. You know, I think the NFL this year with no preseason games, it's going to be interesting how things come off, you know, uh, because to me, a lot of jobs are always decided in the preseason. Uh, not, you know, when you don't, you're not playing football in shorts. That, that's just not how it works. So yeah. I think that'll be interesting. Like a, a life lesson. Well, thank you, Coach Lewis. We appreciate you. Do you mind signing off for us? Uh, this is uh, Coach Marvin Lewis on One Star Recruits. Hey, I appreciate it. Hey, this is Coach Marvin Lewis on One Star Recruits. Have a great awesome. day. Thank you, my man. Hey, good luck this season. Uh, if you, this guy Stango right here is a very, very good golfer. If you ever find yourself in Newport Beach, give us a buzz. We'd love to take you out. <laughs> With six birdies, Coach, I'll take you out. You, you come on to my team anytime. Come on over. See, see, when I coached at Long Beach State, we, we didn't, I couldn't afford it. I never had time to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> good day. Work before play. All right. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Coach. See ya. Okay.